Hello there. I hope you're all doing marvelously well. Today, I thought I'd have a little bit of fun by sharing a first look at the new in-memory middleware features that are part of Magic XPA 4.9. This is really just kicking the tires and showing it working, not so much a detailed walkthrough. We can get to that another time. So as you know, Magic Software are on a journey. It's a noble quest to be fully cloud native. So far, you've seen the web client, some Docker container things and new Linux features. There's Git support, continuous integration and deployment features. You maybe even heard about the smart UX. These are all mile markers along that path. And the new in-memory middleware is part of this process too. In fact, the IMM is already cloud native. The in-memory middleware is intended to replace both the original gangster broker requester framework and the more recent dalliance with Gigaspaces. If you're familiar with Gigaspaces, you'll see that the in-memory middleware provides very similar functionality, albeit in a different way with open source technologies. The goal is to make the middleware more robust, more resilient, and easier to scale and manage application client loads. Right now, the IMM runs in a single machine. It's all a single node under Kubernetes. The next release, XBA 4.10, come in sometime next month, will improve the resilience and availability by allowing it to run over a number of machines, a number of nodes, thereby taking away the single point of failure that has somewhat impacted the original broker too. It's an interesting technology preview because it also foreshadows the magic roadmap. It's a peek into what the future magic stack will look like eventually. Everything living and working in the cloud, utilizing technologies like AKS on Azure and the EKS on AWS. These are managed Kubernetes services provided by Microsoft and Amazon, Google Cloud too. Kubernetes is an open source platform to manage containers and their services. Containers are placed in pods and run on nodes. The IAM node contains five pods. There's a monitor app, a web server for the IMM monitor. There's an in-memory database, which is Redis. There's MongoDB and the controller. So it all sounds a little complicated, but actually it's almost admin free, almost zero config, because we rely on something called a Helm chart that is basically a set of files that describe a related set of Kubernetes resources. And this tells Kubernetes which pods to install and configure and magic supply this to us. The controller handles the admin, it monitors the threads and workers, starts the XP engines on remote machines, handles failures to launch or services that have become unresponsive and scales up services as needed based on reserved and floating licenses. MongoDB stores the log messages. The monitor app provides a set of APIs for the monitor dashboard, and we'll see that soon. The in-memory DB, Redis, stores all current requests and responses and real-time license details. So as we allocate and release license objects, that controls everything. There's an agent per machine where the XPA engines actually run, and this receives commands to start, restart, shut down engines. The engines themselves pull for requests and serve one specific named application. Okay, that's enough word salad and buzzwords. Let's get into the demo. Okay, so this pretty picture that you've been looking at is actually in the Magic Help. You'll find it home, reference guide, distributed application architecture, middleware gateways, in-memory middleware. If you scroll down beneath it, you'll see here there's a setup link. So these are the instructions that we're going to follow to actually make this work. So the first prerequisite is Docker Desktop. You're going to have to download and install that. There is a guide, but it's pretty straightforward. 
Next up, you're going to have to enable Kubernetes. It's pretty simple. First of all, you need to make sure you're using Linux containers, which you can get from the system tray icon. This will let you switch between Windows and Linux. You want to make sure that you're in Linux mode. Uh, in Docker itself, in settings, there's a Kubernetes page. You want to make sure that enable Kubernetes is checked. Okay, having set up Docker Desktop and enabled Kubernetes, the next thing you're actually going to have to do is to install the Magic Server product from the install. Now, you want to do this on the same machine that you've already got your studio set up. And Magic will complain. So the next time you run the install, it'll say, hey, you're already installed. I can update but you got no chance doing anything new. So a very smart man taught me a trick to allow you to install as if it's a fresh machine. And what you're going to do is you are going to access your Roman profile. So let me have a look. So within your Roman profile, there's an install shield installation information folder. And here you will find a good for everything that you've got installed. One of these will be magic. Find the one that's magic and either delete it or rename it as I did here. Uh, and you can install the XBA server product as if it's a fresh machine. So once you install the XBA server product, you are going to end up with an in-memory middleware folder. And this is where all the fun happens. Okay, so if we look at the next setup step, that is to download Helm. And there are a couple of ways to configure it. I found most success by just copying helm.exe into the deployment folder. Okay, so the next step is that we're actually going to deploy the thing. So we can see here that Magic supplies us with a whole bunch of batch shell scripts to launch all the pods beneath Kubernetes. And what we're going to do is execute this deploy-imm.bat. Let's get to it. So you can see I am within the folder where I installed the server product. There's an in-memory middleware folder. And here we have all of the agent, bin, conflict, deploy folders. If we look in deploy, it's deploy-imm that we're going to run. Let me be in the right place. Unleash the Kraken. So basically what's this saying is let's clear up what might have been there before within the Magic XP namespace for the pods under Kubernetes and relaunch. And that's what we're doing. So we'll let us do its stuff. And we're done. So let's check it. So we're going to use this command. Now, kubectl, you can think of as a command line interface for Kubernetes. And it basically says, hey, 
under the Magic XPA namespace, what pods do you have running? So we have all the five that we need. We've got a controller, a monitor, a web server, we've got Mongo and we've got Redis. Hey, that looks good to me. So the next thing we're going to do is actually start up the agent. So the agent, we can start by starting a command prompt. It's got to be in administrator mode. We will find ourselves in the correct directory. We can see that this is what we're going to run. Just before we do, let's check the EMV file. So within the agent folder. So the only thing that I've changed from the default is that the log level is debug. And that gives us slightly more information when it's running, just so that we can feel good about it running. So here we are. Let's start it up. Boom. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is actually to start a project, start the engines that support the applications that we want to run. And this is within the bin folder. So like I said, there's a whole bunch of bat file shell scripts that support what we need to do. We're going to run start projects. That's all based around the project startup JSON that's in the config folder. And it's basically starting up both an, uh, an ent license and an MG web license for applications. Let's actually see that run. Oops, it's PowerShell to do things just slightly differently. Hey, boom. So it does a thing. So what's interesting is that Magic has a new monitor for all of this stuff. And let's see what that looks like. So we have a dashboard here for the in-memory middleware monitor. It's running on port 5118 by default, by default. We can see that we're supporting an application called IMM test. And this is just something that Magic supplies uh, out of the box. We're just gonna see it run. Uh, we have two workers going on. So far, no to context, no requests. We can look at the licenses that have been loaded. Uh, we have an Ent1 license and an MG Web license. And we also have logs. Okay, so let's see a demo run. So the demo application HTML merge application is in the ECF IMM test. We're accessing a program HTML. Let's access it. Okay. Nothing fancy. It's like a hello world. It's just saying, hey, I'm here. I handled your request. Here's my context. You can reload me. If we look at the, the um, monitor, you can see, hey, contacts have been created, request logs have been created. We did it. We got a very basic HTML merge application using the in-memory middleware gateway. 
we're good.